Welcome to Submodule 4 of Financial Management and Organizational Administration, in which we'll discuss upon the legal aspects of NGOs and being an NGO leader. In this submodule, we'll broadly reflect upon the legal aspects of NGOs and of being a leader of an NGO. We'll start by looking at legal liability. We'll then reflect upon the legal requirements that may be placed upon you and your NGO. We'll look at contracts and GDPR, the EU's regulation on data protection and privacy. Finally, we'll consider what support and tools can be available to help an NGO leader manage these legal aspects. The central learnings of this submodule are as follows. An NGO leader doesn't need to be a lawyer, but needs to understand their legal obligations and recognize their legal liability. NGOs and their leaders are responsible for fulfilling certain legal requirements. The type of legal requirements NGOs and their leaders are liable for depend on the legal structure of the organization, the national legislation, and the types of activities the organization is involved in. Contracts play an important role in the administration of NGOs. Contracts can bind NGOs into fulfilling certain agreements and can be used by NGOs to bind other parties to certain agreements. An NGO leader should be aware of their responsibility to control and process personal data in accordance to the EU's General Data Protection Regulation. An NGO leader should use the support and tools available to them to be able to manage and navigate around the legal aspects of NGO administration. Before continuing, it is important to reiterate that there is no one-size-fits-all when considering the legal aspects of NGO administration. There can be many variables depending upon where your NGO is registered, what legal structure it has, and what kind of activities it engages in. As such, the information presented in this module are the expressions and reflections of the course provider's general understanding and should not be considered as legal advice. As soon as you set up your NGO and begin signing contracts, agreements, and other documents on its behalf, you, your organization, and possibly your partners will be legally liable to fulfill certain conditions. Legal liability refers to an obligation that an individual, group of individuals, or entity is legally responsible for fulfilling. Broadly speaking, legal liability can fall under three main categories personal liability, where an individual is legally liable and answerable, collective liability, where more than one individual or entity are jointly liable and answerable, and limited liability, where the financial liability is limited to an entity as opposed to an individual. In this submodule, it will be impossible to explore and define all legal responsibilities in connection with NGOs and offer accurate conclusions on where those responsibilities lie. Nor as an NGO leader are you expected to be a lawyer. However, it is important that as an NGO leader, you're aware that you and your organization will be legally responsible to fulfill certain conditions. Who is liable and for what will very much depend upon the legal status and structure of your organization, the national laws and legal frameworks, and the types of activities you are involved in. However, it is typical that most NGOs will have limited liability whereby you and your board of members will be financially liable to the extent of the capital you have personally invested in the organization, at least to the extent that the situation hasn't been caused intentionally or as a result of negligence. In the following slides, we'll cover some of the common things to consider. As soon as you register your organization and start implementing activities, you will be liable to fulfill certain legal requirements. Legal requirements refer to mandatory requirements specified by an authority mandated by a legislative body. Depending upon the legal structure and activities of your organization, you may be obliged to formalize your organization's statutes and present them to your national authorities and update the authorities should the legal framework of the organization change. You may be required to prepare and submit financial accounts for your organization to national authorities, and you may be liable to pay taxes on income that the organization generates. 
There may be other national laws which your organization as an NGO has to adhere to, for example with regards to donations from political parties or the justification of surplus funds. If you employ staff, you have legal obligations towards them. You will be liable to pay the agreed salary and ensure they have a safe working environment. You will be responsible to ensure that the terms of employment are in line with national legislation. As a part of your continuing obligations, you will most likely be liable to keep records, for example receipts, for a number of years. Within the framework of this course, it is impossible to provide an accurate and comprehensive list of the legal requirements which you will be liable for. Each country will have its own legal frameworks, and as we have determined in a previous module, NGO is a very broad term which is interpreted into different legal structures and terminologies in different countries. As an NGO leader, it is highly likely that you will work regularly with contracts, both as a means in which others can hold you liable and vice versa, so you can hold others liable. A contract is a legally binding agreement between two or more persons or entities. As an NGO leader, you will likely read, write and sign many contracts on behalf of your NGO, for example. A rental contract for your office, which lays out an agreement on the property, including the rental payments you are liable for, the extent to which you or the landlord is liable for repairs, and the agreed procedure for the termination of the rental agreement. An employment contract for your staff member, which stipulates the hours of work, the terms of payment, the code of conduct, and the processes for ending the agreement. A contract with volunteer that commits upon the length of the voluntary period, the non-monetary support such as sustenance, and maybe the learning outcomes that are expected to be realized. A contract with a project donor that specifies in detail the eligible and non-eligible use of the granted funds, the process of reporting and all obligations of both parties. With any contract, it is important to read it careful and understand it. Ask a friend or colleague to read it also to get a second opinion. By signing a contract, you are legally committing to the conditions and obligations within it. GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation, is a regulation within EU law on the protection and privacy of individuals. It is based on the recognition of a person's right to privacy. It is quite likely that your organization will process personal information of individuals to some extent, and it is therefore important that you are familiar with GDPR. You don't necessarily need to know the regulation in detail, however, you should be able to reflect upon the data you collect and process taking into consideration what kind of data it is, why do you need it, and what will you do with it. Within the scope of this course, it is not feasible to explore the regulation in detail. However, it is strongly recommended that you refer to the resources within the reading list. But for now, let's consider the meaning of some of the key terminology used, such as personal data, processing, controller, and processor. Personal data refers to any information relating to an identifiable person or data subject who can be directly or indirectly identified in particular by reference to an identifier, meaning personal information that can be used to identify the individual. The types of identifier to consider can be broad, ranging from a person's name, location or ID number, through to their physical, culture or social identity. Processing refers to any operation or set of operations which is performed on personal data, for example, collecting, recording, organizing, storing, adapting, or sharing. Controller means the natural or legal person, public authority, agency, or other body which determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data. Processor means the natural or legal person, public authority, agency, or other body which processes personal data on behalf of the controller. The reason why you are processing personal data and how you are processing it is essential to consider under GDPR. When collecting and processing personal information as an NGO leader, it is important to consider whether the personal information you are processing is strictly needed, why you are processing the data, whether or not you're processing the information on someone's behalf, meaning the controller, or whether you're acting as a controller and have taken it upon yourself to process personal data. 
and whether the data subject has given you consent to process information about them. In total, GDPR is based on seven key principles, lawfulness, fairness, and transparency, meaning that personal data is processed lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the data subject. Purpose limitation, meaning that personal data is collected for specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with those purposes. Data minimization, meaning that personal data is adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purposes for which they are processed. Accuracy, meaning that personal data is accurate and where necessary kept up to date. Storage limitation, meaning that personal data is kept in a form which permits identification of data subjects for no longer than is necessary for the purposes for which the personal data are processed. Integrity and confidentiality, meaning that the personal data is processed in a manner that ensures appropriate security of the personal data, including protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing and against accidental loss, destruction, or damage using appropriate technical or organizational measures. Accountability, meaning the controller shall be responsible for and be able to demonstrate compliance with the previously mentioned principles. As an NGO leader, you should be aware of these principles and carefully reflect upon the personal data you collect, use, and store. You can find further information on these principles and GDPR in general within the reading list. If you are unsure and need further help, the authority responsible for GDPR in your country may be able to offer further guidance or support. The legal aspects of NGO administration can be daunting and can even prevent people from taking the leap to starting an organization. But this should not be the case. The legal aspects of running an NGO should be taken seriously and you, as an NGO leader, should take the time to build a practical understanding of your legal liabilities. However, an NGO leader does not need to be a lawyer, but needs to be able to recognize and broadly understand their legal responsibilities and seek ways in which to limit the risks of breaching them. In this regard, you should consider too, read into your national legislative frameworks and if possible, speak to the authorities and ask them any questions you may have. Use your network to seek advice and support. Consider investing in outsourced expertise such as a lawyer or an accountant or possibly form an advisory board with legal expertise. You may also think about investing in insurance and you could consider becoming affiliated with an umbrella organization that can offer support and advice. Above all, consider that the legal aspects of running an NGO are not there to trick you or hinder your ambitions. They offer your organization a structure and framework in which it exists and functions and in many cases may act as a safety net for your NGO. We have now reached the end of this submodule. Let us sum up the lessons learned. An NGO leader doesn't need to be a lawyer, but needs to understand their legal obligations and recognize their legal liability. NGOs and their leaders are responsible for fulfilling certain legal requirements. The type of legal requirements NGOs and their leaders are liable for depend upon the legal structure of the organization, the national legislation, and the types of activities the organization is involved in. Contracts play an important role in the administration of NGOs. Contracts can bind NGOs into fulfilling certain agreements and can be used by NGOs to bind other parties to certain agreements. An NGO leader should be aware of their responsibility to control and process personal data in accordance to the EU's General Data Protection Regulation. An NGO leader should use the support and tools available to them to be able to manage and navigate around the legal aspects of NGO administration.